Okay, my friends, this is going to be an exciting discussion. Now, anybody that has any sense of history and has seen anything about the biblical text at all knows about how manna fell from the skies to feed the Israelites on their 40 years wandering through the desert. Now, this was during the Exodus. And, you know, I'm not really good at this, so I could make a lot of mistakes here. So, you know, I'm just telling you what I am taking away from this. The manna was literally flakes of bread, almost, that fell from the heavens. And it fell every night, and they picked it up in the morning and ate it. Now, how could that possibly happen? I think I understand how it did happen, and I think I understand the only possible way it could happen. Now, Christ talks about he is the bread from heaven, and eating of him, his body, and his blood will make you live forever. Now, here's a little clip from this, uh, it's called The Life of Jesus, official full, full high-def movie, and this is by Jesus.net. And again, The Life of Jesus, official full HD movie. It's quite long, three hours. This is a point where I want you to listen to what they're, they're calling them out saying, well, how could you possibly say you're the bread that came down from heaven? This is insane. Here. Son of Joseph, isn't he? We know his father and mother. How then does he now say he came down from heaven? Now think this over very carefully. He's saying that if you eat his body and drink his blood, you will live forever. Now, could you take that literally? Could you? I mean, to think of, think it over very carefully because I'm going to offer you an explanation of this that uh, you know I could be totally wrong again. Everything I'm saying could be totally wrong, but you have to start with some kind of a a premise or so, sort of thinking, how could this possibly be? Because it's, it's just like they, they were saying, ah, oh, this guy's crazy. Well, how could he possibly be saying this stuff? Well, let's think it over, and then I will offer my alternative or my, you know, possible, you know, scenario of how this could possibly happen. Stop rumbling among yourselves! People cannot come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them to me. And I will raise them to life on the last day. All right, let me just talk about that right now. Raise them to life on the last day. That's a soul. Now, I've, I've been doing a lot of studying on this because this is really intrigues me. Now, do you become reborn? And I believe that is the case. I'm going to tell you my beliefs as I go along here. What, you know, it's just what I think. It's, it has nothing to do with you. It's what I think. But these are the conclusions I've drawn. That once you are a soul, once your soul exists, it goes through trials, basically. And this earth is a trial. I mean, it is. It's a little bit of a trial. Um, well, it's a lot of a trial. For some people, it's just absolutely horrifying misery. So do you learn from that? Is that what it's all about? I don't know. But I, I, I really believe we will all face another cycle, however you want to think about that, whether you will become another human being or an animal or some kind of creature or become even some landscape or water. Because they talked all about all of those things being possible. Metamorphosis talks about the gods being able to transform people into anything they wanted, literally anything. Metamorphosis. And they did. Now, those were, I think, the bad gods. 
this is very, very confusing, but getting back to what we're discussing now is how could we eat the flesh and drink the blood of Jesus Christ? And that would make us live forever. Think about that for one second. Okay, if you know me, you know that I read all the texts. Ovid, um, Hesiod, Herodotus, Plato, everything, all of them. Because they all were closer to the source than we are. Now, Jesus said, if you eat his flesh and drink his blood, you would live forever. Well, And then he also said, I am God. He said, I am God. I am really God. I am the manifest Son of Man, but literally God, all right, in, in the flesh. So, what is God? God is everything. And I can tell you what, right now, this earth is 100% biological. The body of this earth is a corpse and a body. And guess who said that? Jesus Christ. All right, as I said, I go through all of the ancient texts, all of them, and they talk about the planets and the moons and all of that being creatures and bodies of gods, and, and literally gods. And Jupiter was the feared god Jupiter. Now, this is the Nag Hammadi text, and this is very, very interesting because it's not exactly what the Bible talks about, although there's a lot of references that correspond. And then the Dead Sea Scrolls were also found at this time, right after the Nazis tried to exterminate the Jews. I mean, this is just amazing. And I, I, I'm telling you right now, we're in trouble on this earth. I don't know if this is end times or not. I'm not going to make any predictions, but it sure doesn't look good. Now, this is what, these are the secret sayings that the living Jesus spoke, with his mouth, spoke to Didymus Judas Thomas, and he recorded it. That is Doubting Thomas, the one that said, I can't believe you're really Jesus, he stuck his finger in the hole in his side. So, this is, he wrote this, and there's 113 sayings here, and two of them specifically talk about the earth being a corpse and a body. So, if God is Jesus, and Jesus is God, and God is literally everything, then God is the earth, and there were giants in the earth in those days, and the earth is constructed of literally body parts of giants or giant creatures, the cave systems and all that stuff. These are digestive systems and all that. I know people think I'm crazy. I am not crazy. This is, I have a lot of facts on this. And Jesus said, he said, discover these interpretation of these sayings, you will not taste death. Now, I don't think anybody's going to ever understand all these sayings because they're just mind-boggling. But if you try, that's the best you're going to be able to do. Now listen to this. Jesus said, those who seek should not stop seeking until they find. All right? Now, when they find, they will be disturbed, and when they are disturbed, they will marvel and will reign over all, and after they have reigned, they will rest. Well, whatever that means, I am not certain. But I can tell you one thing right now. I have been seeking, and I am not going to stop seeking, and I have found a lot of stuff, I think. Uh, you know, I, but I'm just going to keep going, because every day I find something new. Now, this is about, like I said, eating Jesus' body and his drinking his blood. You're literally eating what comes out of the earth, and you are every day anyway. So you're going to do that. You're going to eat what comes out of the earth, and that literally is the manifest body of God. And it's 56 and 80 say exactly this. Well, here's 80. Let's start with 80 first. Jesus said, whoever has come to know the world has discovered the body. And then it says that whoever discovers, the, if you can discover that, if you can handle the truth, of what the world is, then you are above most people, so that you are more worthy, let's put it that way. 
56 is the other one. And it's just, it's just both of them the same thing. Not just 56. Jesus said, whoever has come to know the world has discovered a carcass. That's what they're all, it's a carcass. Whoever has discovered a carcass of that person in the world is not worthy. Come to realize the truth of what's going on here. And then you will be worthy. Because I'm telling you, most of the people are not worthy to be here. I'm, I'm telling you that right now. I, I, it's, um, it's a shocking truth that I never expected such denial of truth. And uh, most of it is in the academic realm because they just have to embrace evolution and, you know, absolutely no God. All the things that they were told to say, if they don't say them, they will be thrown out of their little club. And that's not working for them. It's not going to work at all now. That case is closed. You know, it's funny. Jesus felt exactly the same way. Academic, not of practical relevance. <laughs> Only theoretical interest. They just want to play their little games and concoct stories. And that's exactly what they said. Okay, truth is, I never read the Bible. I, I, I know some of it, and a lot of these things that just popped up, like um, certain individuals whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. They are ungodly people who pervert the grace of God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ, our only so sovereign and Lord. And then there's one about here, teachers. 2 Peter 2. In their greed, these false teachers will exploit you with tales they have concocted. That's the academics, right? In their greed, and that's what it is. These false teachers, academics, will exploit you with tales they have concocted. And I notice a ton of people are in debt with student loans paying back these academics that have told you what you had to say, and if you didn't say it, they would ruin your lives. The long-standing verdict against them remains in force, and their destruction does not sleep. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Well, truth is not allowed now. Titus 1.16, they claim to know God, but by their actions they deny Him. They are detestable, disobedient, and unfit for doing anything good. And there's one about right here, look. Luke 19.40. As he approached the descent from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to praise God joyfully in a loud voice for all the miracles they had seen. And I'm looking into all the miracles Jesus did. And if he did the things they said, he had to be who he said he was. And then they said, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. But some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. Jesus said, I tell you, he answered, if they remain silent, the very stones will cry out. And that's what's happened. They've been forced to remain silent. And the stones have cried out, and they have got to be hearing it. And 1 Corinthians says, Brothers, consider the time of your calling. And listen to me. That's everyone that I'm speaking to right now. To consider the time of your calling. They're going to say you're not wise by human standards. You're not powerful by human standards. None of you are by noble birth, or as I am, not by noble birth. God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. He chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose the lowly and despised things of the world and the things that are not to nullify the things that are. That's pretty serious. And then the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled. You will be ever hearing but never understanding. You will be ever seeing but never perceiving. People's hearts have grown callous. They hardly hear with their ears. They've closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. 
right? But blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. For truly I tell you, many prophets and righteous men long to see what you see but did not see it and to hear what you hear but did not hear it. And all of the academics now refuse to see it and refuse to hear it. And that, my friends, is even legally an issue because they are supposed to be fiduciaries to the students, not to just to support their own little claims. And that's what's happened. It's become a denialist system in order to not allow anything to be spoken of. What's this? Dragon rises. It's prophesied in our instructions that the end of the world would be near when the trees start dying from the tops down. That's what the maples are doing today. Our instructions say something. In each time will come when there will be no corn, when nothing will grow in the garden, when water will be filthy and unfit to drink, then a great monster will rise up from the water and destroy mankind. That's not good. Yeah, it's not good at all. Anyway, I, these these things people just sent to me, and you know, like Jesus said, recognize what's in your sight, and that which is hidden from you will become plain to you. For nothing is hidden will not become manifest. And I think to somewhere else it says nothing that is buried will not become. Everything that's buried will become unburied or something like that. I don't know. It goes on and on and on. I, these things just show up. I didn't go looking for these things either. I'm telling you. And some of them are Sumer Sumerian stuff. And Jesus Christ chemistry. This is the one. I understand what's going on with the chemistry of, of the body and what came out of space during the Exodus. And it, that's a mind blower. Seven tablets of the history of creation. I got a lot of stuff on this. The righteous hate what is false, but the wicked make themselves a stench and bring shame on themselves. For the time, whoops, for the time will come when men will not tolerate sound doctrine, but with itching ears they will gather around themselves teachers to suit their own desires. So they will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths which are mainstream, <laughs> mainstream science men with titles proving false to their teachings. Grand illusion. Anyway, we, uh, we need to start thinking on our own. As, and and, and I, I never could have ever contemplated any of the things that I just told you. I would have never, ever, ever I would have laughed hysterically at somebody showing, talking to me about that, but I have evidence to support the things I'm saying. 